Hello grade tens. Today we will look at energy. We have studied energy in previous grades. Can you remember how to describe energy and where we can find simple examples of energy in our lives? In today's lesson we will look at different ways that we experience energy. Most of us have a good concept of energy that goes something like this. Energy is what we need to accomplish physical actions such as walking, lifting a cup, heating some water or powering a television set. Although these descriptions of where energy is used are correct, it does not fully explain to us what energy actually is or even how it behaves. Energy can be defined as the ability to do work. Energy has a number of very special properties. Let's consider the following. Firstly, Energy can be transferred from one object or system to another through the interaction of forces between the objects. Energy can also be transformed so that we experience it in different ways. An example of energy transformation is in a typical lightning strike. 500 million joules of electric potential energy is converted into the same amount of energy in other forms, most notably light energy, sound energy and thermal energy. Secondly, energy is always conserved, that is, it is never created or destroyed. It is simply transformed from one form to another. This is known as the law of conservation of energy. And finally, energy comes in multiple forms or types such as kinetic, potential, thermal, heat, chemical, electromagnetic and nuclear energy to name but a few. All these forms of energy can be classified as either potential energy or kinetic energy. Let's first look at potential energy. Potential energy is energy due to an object's position in a gravitational, magnetic or electric field. Think about this bow and arrow. When the bow is in its undrawn or rest position, there is no energy stored in the bow. Remember that atoms are held together by attractive electrostatic forces. The atoms are in positions of lowest potential energy. When the string of a bow is stretched, the atoms in the string change position relative to one another and are in a higher energy state. When the string is released, this potential energy causes the arrow to move. When this happens, the atoms and the string go back to the rest position. So we see that atoms can have energy as the result of their position. Let's use an example where we can actually see the position of the object. Consider the heavy ball of a demolition machine. When the ball is held high up, it has energy due to its position above the ground. This is called gravitational potential energy. Gravitational potential energy is the energy that an object has as a result of its position in a gravitational field. The position is measured relative to a certain point of reference. We use the ground as our point of reference most of the time when we refer to gravitational potential energy. The symbol we use to represent potential energy is a capital letter E with a subscript letter P. Since this is a form of energy, it is measured in joules represented with a capital letter J. Let's look at an example. The amount of gravitational potential energy that a skateboarder possesses is dependent on two variables, the mass of the person and the height to which he is raised. Here is a skateboarder in a skate park at the top of the ramp. The bottom of the ramp is the point of reference. There is a direct relation between the gravitational potential energy and the mass of an object. More massive objects have greater gravitational potential energy. There is also a direct relation between gravitational potential energy and the vertical height of an object. An object that is high above the reference level has greater gravitational potential energy than when it is lowered down. At position 1, the boy and skateboard has no gravitational potential energy. At position 2, he is higher up so his gravitational potential energy increases. And at position 3, the highest point in reference to the ground, the gravitational potential energy is at a maximum. Mathematically, these relationships that describe different amounts of gravitational potential energy can be expressed by an equation. Ep equals mgh. 
In the equation, m represents the mass of the object in kilograms, h represents the height of the object in meters, and g represents the acceleration due to gravity. On Earth, the value for g is a constant of 9,8 meters per second squared. Let's do an example together. A 30 kilogram child sits 15 meters up a tree. What is the child's gravitational potential energy? First, we identify the information provided in the problem. The child has a mass of 30 kilograms, therefore m equals 30 kilograms, and he sits 15 meters up the tree, therefore h equals 15 meters. Next, we write down the equation to calculate the gravitational potential energy. That is E subscript P is equal to mgh, where g is equal to 9,8 meters per second squared. Now we substitute this information into the equation and solve the problem. So we get 30 times 9,8 times 15. This equals 4,410 joules of gravitational potential energy. What will happen if the boy loses his grip in that tree? Well, we saw earlier that energy can be transferred. That boy will definitely fall very quickly out of the tree. That brings us to the next form of energy, namely kinetic energy. When the boy falls out of the tree, his gravitational potential energy changes to kinetic energy, since kinetic energy is the energy due to motion. Let's consider another example. The girl holds a ball in her hand at a certain height above the ground. Here, it possesses gravitational potential energy. When she lets go of the ball, that energy is transformed into kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy that an object possesses due to its motion. This kind of energy depends on two variables, namely the mass of the object and the velocity at which the object moves. The symbol used for kinetic energy is E subscript K, and since it is a form of energy, it is measured in joules. The equation that we use is E subscript K equals half M multiplied by V squared, where E K represents the kinetic energy measured in joules. M represents mass in kilogram, and V is the velocity of the object in meters per second. Getke will now show us the relationship between the kinetic energy and the mass of an object in motion. So, if these two vehicles have the same velocity but different masses, what do you think tells us about their kinetic energy? Both these vehicles have the same velocity, V, but the mass of the truck is double that of the car which will be 2m. Inserting that into the equation, we see that it means the truck will have double the kinetic energy the car has. Can you see that the vehicle with the larger mass has the greater kinetic energy? In fact, kinetic energy is directly proportional to the mass of the object. Now that we know this relationship between mass and kinetic energy, let's apply it to a real life problem. Our roads are not very safe because of the number of vehicle accidents is very high. Often vehicles collide because their stopping distance is greater than the distance between them and an obstacle. Watch this animation to illustrate this problem. At the start, both vehicles have the same velocity and are the same distance away from a wall. Remember, the truck has a greater mass and therefore more kinetic energy. Do you think both these vehicles will be able to stop before hitting the wall? No, the truck hits the wall, but the car stops in time. I hope you can see from this example that it really does not make any sense to get into an overloaded car or taxi. Because of the increased energy mass, the kinetic energy is greater, and it is hard to stop the overloaded vehicle in a short distance. And sadly, this might be what could end up happening to you. But it is not just the mass of the object that affects the kinetic energy. Please tell us more, KK. Now, thinking of accidents, I'm sure you will have heard the expression speed kills. Let's try and explain this in terms of kinetic energy. These two vehicles have the same mass, M. 
This blue vehicle has a speed of 10 meters per second and the red one has a speed of 20 meters per second. Can you write an expression for the kinetic energy of the two cars? Although the speed of the red car is twice the speed of the blue car, look, the kinetic energy of the red car is four times the kinetic energy of the blue car. So the red car requires four times the amount of work to stop. The reason for this bigger kinetic energy is because kinetic energy is directly proportional to velocity squared. I think it's clear why excess speed and mass are causes of many accidents. Thank you, Keke. Let us use this equation now in an example. A 55 kilogram man runs at a speed of 4 meters per second. Find his kinetic energy. We list the information given and check that the units are correct. The mass is 55 kilograms and the speed is 4 meters per second. Write down the formula and substitute the values into the equation. The man's kinetic energy is therefore 440 joules. That's it for now. You can find some more energy related problems for practice in the task video. You'll also find more information on our website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Until next time, goodbye.